Hey, thanks for joining us online today at FirstChurchNP.com. If you're not there right now, I'd encourage you to go there now and check out some of the ministries that we have going on, ministry opportunities, whether that's serving, helping us feed the hungry, engaging with children or student ministries. All of them are great and we uh, would just love to connect with you. Speaking of connect, if you would fill out our connect card online, let us know that you're watching, share with us a prayer request or sign up for a ministry. You can do that there as well. That's firstchurchnp.com. As always, you can join us in person here in worship on Saturdays at 6.15, Sunday at 9, Sunday at 10.30. You'll be so glad you did. And, and if you're not able, then we encourage you to keep watching, but also just feel free to connect with us whenever you can. Um, lastly, I want you to plan to have the best Christmas ever. One of the ways that we, that we think will sincerely bless you and your family this year is by joining us for Christmas Eve worship at 5, 7, and 11 on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So again, those times are 5, 7, and 11. We hope you can join us for candlelight worship, and we will see you next time. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks, thanks be, be for to God. God. Today is the first day of Christmas and, uh, and, and our Christmas season that we call Advent. Advent also known as the second Lent in the way that we celebrate and prepare our hearts for a very special tradition that we've come to know over, know over the last 100 and 150 years. And this season, as you can see from our graphic, we're going to be uh, looking at perspective. We're going to be looking at the perspective of several different gospel accounts, actually all four gospel accounts of how Christ came into the world. And so um, just a quick little note here for some for a little challenge for you, if you're looking for something um, to maybe go above and beyond this season, if you would like to read through the Gospel of Luke, it actually works out really nicely. You can read a chapter of a day, and by the time Christmas comes, you will have read through the whole Gospel of Luke, hearing the whole story of Christ's not only birth, but his life, his ministry, his death, and resurrection. So I encourage you to do that. But we're looking at perspective, and here's why. And uh, how many of you get our spires, our monthly newsletter? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, a lot of you are getting it, but how many of you are reading it? Okay, about the same. Thank you. That's good. In Pastor Doug's cover letter that he put in our monthly newsletter, he said this, a new perspective or understanding on our current situation will ultimately determine our future situation. You know what I'm talking about. The better a perspective you have, the, the more likely you are to end up where you want to be. And if you're not considering all those perspectives, you, things might just stay the same. Um, another way to put it, a, a fun little analogy that I was thinking of is uh, my dad, when we were learning how to drive, he knows Southwest 
Kansas like nobody's business. And so we'd ask him for directions, especially when we were headed out in the country to somebody's house or, or for whatever reason. And I got used to this, but he'd even do this to my buddies. He'd say, well, you know, you know where you're going, right? And we go, yeah, 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 just give us a couple of, how do we get, where do we start? He goes, well, go off a of bop, you know, bop, that heads you out of town, and then it turns into the Y road, the Y axis road. Um, and then uh, if you keep going on the left, you run past Jennings Farm, right? You guys don't know any of this, but I knew where, where he was talking about. And then he'd say, well, it's got nothing to do with it you really need to be over here on the north side of town. And it was just, oh, dad, man, we need your perspective, but don't mess with us. And uh, anyway, I have my dad's sense of humor. I still thought it was funny, but um, we all know this. We need God's perspective. We need a heavenly perspective if we're going to navigate this world. So in order to, uh, I, I just wanted to lift up one additional text, one additional verse for today to, to kind of supplement our, our reading. And it's Micah 6.8. Don't you just love that name? <laughs> the Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Another translation puts that last little phrase, and humbly obey your God, in a little bit more palatable way. And it says to humbly walk with your God. And what happens when we walk with somebody, when we journey with somebody, anybody in general, but especially God? You gain their perspective, don't you? It's, it's a journey kind of thing. It's a daily kind of thing. And, and uh, so I really like that translation, translation and uh, it's just a really good thing. And so to start off today, a little bit of perspective to get us going. Um, I was scrolling through Facebook and ran across an old interview from former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. And he was talking about the United States of America and our long history of almost 250 years of existence. He says... The United States of America has been at peace for only 16 years. So we worship the Prince of Peace. He's talking about Jesus here. Everyone is praying, but nobody's listening to what God is saying. Kind of an interesting perspective, I think. So as we, as we try and listen for God's perspective this season, we're going to look at one of our characters today and see what um, see what kind of perspective he might have to offer on your life. And so I have another question for you all. I, I promise the hand raising will stop here soon. Um, but how many of you know Doubting Thomas? Doubting Didymus? That's a much better alliteration, Didymus in the Bible. You know, one of the disciples, Thomas? I'm getting some head nods, some. Well, he's got nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> We're talking about Joseph. Our scripture reading today was about Joseph. And so... Um, as, we, as we consider this biblical character, the earthly father of Jesus, I, I've, got, I've got kind of a, an idea I want to run past you, a consideration. I think, I believe, Joseph is the only one out of the nativity scene that you could take out. And nothing would have really changed. See, Mary was already expecting. So Jesus was already going to be born whether or not Joseph decided to step up. And I think that's an interesting perspective today. Because Joseph had to step up to, be, to become a stepfather, if you will, to Jesus. And not just to become a step-parent, which is enough. I mean, that's a lot of work already. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that go into that. But to also take on the scandalous idea of Mary. I mean, what would have people actually said about Mary? They wouldn't have believed her when she said, this is the child of God. They wouldn't have believed her. And so he had to take on the scandalous story, take on this wild idea. He had to really step up above and beyond his plan. And there's something about becoming a parent that offers us new perspective, isn't there? I know we've got a lot of teens in the room. You guys are clueless. It's okay. Um, and you need to stay clueless for a while. But um, those of us that have become parents, you know what I'm talking about. That moment that you know you're expecting, your whole world changes. And I think Joseph's world was changing too. He stepped back to humbly consider God's perspective. And I wanted to share this from my own testimony, from my own walk. There, it was just a few short years ago. I had to do the same thing. See, I was a student at Fort Hayes and was planning on entering my last semester of, of education to then do my student teaching and then become a music educator. That was the plan in Kansas, and it was going to be fun. I, I, don't, I don't know that there was anything really wrong with it. It was the plan. 
And uh, it, was, it was early June, I remember this, I'll never forget it. Trish runs out of the bathroom. I knew, she was at, I knew she had taken a couple of tests. We thought we were ready to be parents, whatever that means. Um, and she runs out screaming and she's so excited and, yeah, we're gonna have a baby! You know, her voice gets higher than ever before. It was, it was a fantastic moment. I also remember, like, having one of those out-of-body experiences, like, drifting up and like, oh my goodness, what is happening? Taking it all in, right? Um, it offers a new perspective. And, and that was one of two things that was already going on in my life. See, for me, becoming a music educator was always plan B. It was the safe plan. It was the good plan. You know, everybody was encouraging me. Just keep going. You'll stick to it. It's the right thing to do. But there was something that I was feeling, well, the word is called. I was feeling a nudge. I was feeling like maybe there's something a little bit different to do here. Maybe I've been preparing for something entirely different than what I expected. I told a couple of my buddies this. One even sat me down. I'll never forget the restaurant or the moment. He was so encouraging, and I'm so grateful for this. But he said, Micah, don't be afraid. You've got to stay the course, stick to the plan, keep doing the good thing. I've seen you direct the pep band. I've seen you drum major. You're going to do this. You're going to do it well. And I said, no, I'm not. I, I, I don't think this is right. We kind of agreed to disagree at that moment. And you've been there too. You know what I'm talking about. When everything is changing, and things are like always changing, and you step back and you wonder, is this the right plan? You know, we just spent a whole, whole two or three months listening to God, learning how to listen to God better. I encourage you, in those moments, in those seasons of change, which this is a season of change, let's admit it. 2020 is only 30 days away. Listen to God's voice. Listen to that soft whisper that he has. This is where Joseph is at. The situation is changing, and God offers him something other than the good plan. This is what God tells him to do. In Matthew 1, 21, let's read it again. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Like Joseph, I was being led to do something other than what was the plan. And so, there just kind of comes a moment where you have to step up. You have to do it. And even to this day, um, I stay up much later than Trish. I'm kind of a night owl. And so she had gone to bed early. And uh, I got on the internet and searched and emailed a pastor. And I thought, hey, this is a good idea. So I copied it and uh, sent it to Trish. And we may or may not have had one of our biggest fights the next morning. Maybe. And she was fair to say, you're going to move us away? You're going to move us from our home, our life, our church, our family? But we both had a decision to make. We both had a choice to make. Were we going to stick to the plan, the safe, the good thing? Or were we going to take a step up and do something that we weren't sure about but we felt God leading us to? You know what happens when most of us make this choice, when most of us become aware of this choice, and it can come through all sorts of feelings, what we do is we just think what, what we need to do is right, right? We just take in our own perspective, or we might just listen to the one friend, but we don't ever actually seek out spiritual counsel, and we don't actually ever really pray about it. Many of us do that, but we should be doing it for everything, because what happens when we don't consult God, when we don't walk with God in these choices, when we're presented with new perspectives, you know what happens? We just end up passing the problem further down the road. It's what leads to only having 16 years of peace in the nation. The problem all of us as Christ followers wrestle with is when we're faced with humbly obeying God, we ask ourselves, wasn't I already doing good? Wasn't I already doing the right thing? Have you ever asked yourself that? When you feel called to do something different, wasn't I already doing good? I don't think that's the right question. Matthew 1.19 says, Joseph, being a righteous man, and let's pause there for a second. I want to substitute the word righteous because we don't use that word today. We use the word good. Let's change that out. Joseph, being a good man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. There was a plan. It was a good plan. It was an honorable plan. But it wasn't what God was calling him to do. And that's all we want, isn't it? 
We just want everything to be good. Stick, don't stir up trouble. Don't, don't, don't go off the path. Whether or not you believe it, we do have to make this choice. We do have to listen for the soft whisper of Jesus day in and day out. And we can either just dismiss it, like the world wants us to do, or we can step up. Mary was going to have the baby either way. She was already expecting. Joseph had to make a, you know, he could have written off. He could have said, man, that was some bad tuna. What a weird dream. And stuck to the plan. That's what most of us do. Just dismiss it. I, I theorize, I think it's fun to think about these things. You know, Mary went off to stay with her cousin Elizabeth. Maybe Zechariah, her husband, would have been the father of Jesus. Maybe that's who we'd know today. It's kind of interesting to think about. But Jesus would have still been born. He still would have lived a life of ministry to leave us as an example. He still was going to die and he was still going to raise from the dead three days later just so you and I can share in this. Joseph would have been right to walk away but let's remember what Micah 6.8 says. See that justice is done let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Joseph was being a righteous man, unwilling to expose her. Do you hear the mercy in that? He planned to dismiss her quietly. It was justice. It was just to dismiss her. And he was even merciful in the way he was doing it. But then there's that extra part. Oh yeah, and humbly obey God. It's more, it's above, it's far and beyond what anybody really is asking of you, but it's what's necessary. And not for Christ's sake. Let's be ultimately clear. It's not for Christ's sake that we need to step up. It was for Joseph's sake. Can you imagine the miraculous life that Joseph got to witness because he stepped up? It's true for you. It's true for me. We get the opportunity. I like to think about this. What if Trish and I had decided to stay? What if I had decided to become a music teacher? Well, things would have been a lot different for us, for Trish and I. Would First Church have been okay? Of course, of course. Because First Church is dependent not on my ministry, not on Pastor Doug, but on one and one person alone, and that is Christ and Christ alone. We would have missed out on the blessing of First Church, is the reality. The real question is not what would Jesus have been without him, what would the church be without us, but what would I be without Jesus? And so ask yourself this today. What would I be without Jesus or his bride, the church? It requires a big step. And so I'll say it, that step might look like joining a small group. That step might look like, well, we're serving the hungry this week. We're feeding the hungry this week on Thursday night. That might look like giving up an hour of television to go feed those that need it. That step might look like making it a priority to be in worship over sports games that I don't think should have ever been scheduled on Sunday morning to begin with. It's an interesting perspective. It might look like actually taking time to pray about what God might be telling you to do with your life. Whatever it is, it's going to look a lot different from each and every one of you and you're going to feel that call a little bit different than I did because I don't think we're all called to vocational ministry. We're all called to just be ministers to the world. And so the only thing that it has in common is a simple heart condition, a heart condition of systematically, relentlessly, consistently, and step by step, even though sometimes we'll get it wrong, pursuing Christ and putting him first in absolutely everything. It's gonna take a lifetime to figure this out, but that's what it means to walk with God. So I, I know what some of you are thinking. Sometimes, and this is what I think too, sometimes when I'm caught with this kind of a message, it's like, wow, but what about my life? I, we, we start to think that way, and that's okay. I, I don't feel bad for thinking that way because we don't have to make the ultimate sacrifice. There's freedom in that. All of these things that we can do, that we can respond to the God, the, the God that we have, the merciful God that we have, is nothing compared to the sacrifice that he has made for each and every one of you. Jesus did something amazing by living the perfect life and surrendering that life on our behalf. So we don't have to pay the ultimate sacrifice. We can just step into his story and be a part of his ministry. It's a good thing. 
and it's a chance that we have. So I want to be clear. I want to bring this point in because it's very important. I think it's very important. In order to walk with Jesus, we have to have faith. We have to step up into that. I firmly believe that we are not all children of God. I know that's a little controversial. I don't believe everyone on this planet is a child of God. I believe God loves everyone. But I don't think we're all children. It requires us to step up into his family. One of the verses that I think points this out, Paul writes in Galatians 3.26, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. It requires the step up to experience that blessing. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we think, well, I'll just stick to the good plan. We get too narrow-minded. Remember, that's what Joseph was starting to do. Joseph, being a righteous man, a good man, as it says in 119. You remember that? The goodness that Joseph had? Joseph was a good guy. I love Joseph. We all like Joseph. But remember, it's got nothing to do with it. The goodness has nothing to do with it. It's all in response. It's all into stepping up into God's calling. It's not just justice. It's not just mercy. Do those things, but let's get some perspective. Let's have faith. Walk humbly with Jesus. Watch how he reveals his new mercies. And I can say from my own experience, it's all been worth it. I imagine you can think about Joseph thinking about how it was all worth it. This Christmas, let's remember, Jesus doesn't need you to be a part of his story, but he's inviting you. Let's listen, but let's step up to that calling. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to reflect and maybe step back today. Jesus, we've talked a lot about kind of this big scale step up, but Jesus, the reality is there's just little things that we can do that are gonna make this a big difference. So Jesus, I ask that you would pour your perspective down, pour your perspective into each and every one of us, that as our situation changes like Joseph's was changing, that you would also speak to us. We want to be your humble servants, so we ask that you strip away all distractions. We ask that you be ever present, as you always are, but that we would be aware of that presence, aware of your movement, and aware of your ministry. Jesus, we're reminded that 2,000 years ago, you made that ultimate sacrifice so that we wouldn't have to. But when you told us about the sacrifice you were about to make, you also called us to step up. You invited us to step up. See, as you broke the bread, as you poured out the blood, as you poured out the cup, you did it amongst friends, and you also, sh also shared a great commission, a great commandment that we love one another. And that love is demonstrated not only through your ministry, but today through each and every one of us. So Jesus, today as we, as we reflect on you, let us remember this ritual. Let us remember that we are called to a true life of holiness, one that is filled with justice and mercy, but also from your perspective that allows us to gain so much more than this world has to offer. Let us walk with you. Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for an opportunity to encourage your people. Let it be that, an encouragement but also a conviction and a challenge to step up, not to anything, but to you. Jesus, we love you, and we declare your mercy. It's in your name we pray, amen.